You want to know what's really shocked everybody? The fact that Google, one of the largest tech companies in the world, is seriously lacking on the AI front. They do produce a lot of really great research, we get a lot of really cool demos and examples from them of AI-generated work, and lots of really great papers, but they never seem to actually give us users, the public, us AI enthusiasts, any actual demos to play with, and barely any open source tech. Contrast that with the likes of Meta AI, which have released a ton of open source AI tech for us. Way back when Dolly 2 was like the most popular AI image generator, Google teased to us an AI image generator that was just ridiculously good. This is the original Google Image Insight. As you can see, there was a research paper that was released, but all we really got to see was a bunch of examples with their corresponding prompts. But yeah, these examples are so difficult to believe in because they're just that good. I mean, this was miles and miles ahead of what we had seen before when it was announced. And to be honest, in a lot of cases, it still is like better than anything else out there. I mean, look at this. This is literally the perfect Google logo with like a perfect image of the Toronto skyline. I mean, it is ridiculous. The small cactus image. I mean, they're so clear. They're so intricate. They're so detailed. It's perfection. They give us some simple explanations for how it works. And they have, you know, a pretty interactive demo where you can mess around with some of the prompts and, you know, switch up what is happening. So we have some consistency across all of the images and we can uh, get a better feel for this thing but this still isn't very satisfying we want to type our own prompts in and to make matters even crazier google later released party which seems to be an upgraded more advanced version of google imogen it has different scalable models that can run on different size gpus and they even show you how the models become more advanced over time. The 20 billion one produces perfect text. They really just left us hanging with these really nice examples and mind-blowing stuff. But viewers, one of my Discord members just sniffed out some glimpse of hope. It is very possible that in the near future we might see Google's Imogen slash Party AI image generation models released as an API or at least just to developers, maybe even in Google's AI test kitchen, which is like an exclusive waitlist app for your iPhone. I'm about to share that source with you, but first a message from our sponsor. Viewers, today's video is sponsored by none other than the legendary service of NordVPN. First of all, it is dead simple to use. It's a literally a one-click VPN, auto connects right to the server, and once you're connected, you're greeted with world-class protection and access to all kinds of services that you normally would not have access to. Depending on your geographic location, access to certain web services might be banned in your country. Viewers, I can't tell you how many times I've got comments from people complaining that a certain AI service is just not available in their country. NordVPN is the perfect solution to this particular issue. All you have to do is set your VPN location to a country in which that particular service is not banned. And with the link in my description below, you'll get access to an exclusive offer. Plus, when you sign up, it is a completely risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. And with Nord, you don't have to worry about any speed issues. Check this out. This is my real internet speed with NordVPN on. It is just as fast. I was pretty shocked to see that. Airline websites actually detect your geographic location based on your IP. And strangely enough, certain areas have higher ticket prices than others. So if you're masking all of that out with the VPN, you might have a chance at getting a cheaper flight. Every single device is supported by NordVPN as well, your phone, your Fire TV, your Android tablet, your computer, your Mac. Viewers, if you are in need of a VPN, NordVPN is definitely the way to go. NordVPN.com slash MattVidProAI. Thanks for listening, viewers. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Take a look at this. Not too long ago, Google's Cloud Tech YouTube channel released this video, which is simply titled Generate and Edit Images with Generative AI Studio. It only has 10,000 views which is less than most videos that I produce. Not many people know about this. We still don't have access to Google's Imogen, but this is a huge sign of hope because a select amount of people actually do have access to it. And there is somewhat of a wait list, although it's not a typical wait list for the general public. Image generation is one of the hottest advancements in recent AI technology. And it's now possible for anyone to create their own realistic images with just a few clicks using generative AI studio in Google Cloud. I wanna point out that the way this guy is talking 
Seems like it's for people or developers that have possibly never even used this technology and maybe just heard about it in a news article or something. This really shows you that we are not the target audience and that actually makes me kind of excited because it feels like I've uncovered some sort of secret treasure. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can get started and reveal some of the tips and tricks for getting the best results. I'm also gonna show you some of the new features of Generative AI Studio that just might change the way you work with generated images. So let's get started. If you're not already familiar with image generation, this is the technology where you can feed an AI model a text description or prompt of what you want. And the AI will generate brand new images that match that prompt. And now you can use and build with this technology in Generative AI Studio on Vertex AI. So what is that? Well, in the background, Google has this thing called Generative AI Studio on Vertex AI, and it's a part of their Google Cloud service, which essentially is made for developers and specifically like startup companies, small businesses, even large businesses. This is not something for the general public. To get started, we'll navigate to Generative AI Studio and click through to Vision. Now, we enter our prompt which describes the image we want to generate and hit submit. An array of images will be generated so that you can take your pick of which ones you like best. So he's literally teaching us how to use an AI image generator, but we can see this is literally in the Google Cloud website, in the Google Cloud suite, something called just image generation. It doesn't say image and it doesn't say party, but it's developed by Google. All right, so let's take a look at the settings here. This reveals to us some interesting aspects about this AI image generation model. And yes, the results are actually really, really nice. DSLR photo of uh, some food. But yeah, the, the results looking good. What's cool is they definitely have support for different aspect ratios in here. The image resolution is 1024 by default. So yes, this thing supports what we want, different aspect ratios and different resolutions. And it seems to be pretty high resolution by today's standards of 1024. We can also just simply type in the number of image results we want. With the Google Cloud, you have like a free trial and then you start to pay for what you use. So I assume you're paying for all of these generations. Anyways, could you just type in like 800 results and Google's cloud will just start cranking them out? I don't know. This is even more interesting. We have negative prompts. Can you believe that? I would have assumed this is very similar to like Dolly or something like that. But actually, we're looking more on the stable diffusion side of things with negative prompts. Google must have some belief in uh, the effect that they had in Stable Diffusion's success for sure. And there you have it. You can directly export and use these images for your content, apps, or marketing campaigns. One tip when writing prompts is that it helps to be as specific as possible to generate exactly what you want. Or if you're in more of an ideation phase, then you can be vague with your prompt and let the AI generate more random images. A good prompt pattern to follow when generating images is to structure your prompt with the form style, then subject, and then the context. Very interesting. We're actually getting some insight from Google themselves. Start with your style, then move on to the subject, then move on to the context and background. Yeah, all of this really is evident though that this is made to try to get businesses started on this stuff. People that really haven't worked with AI before. It's, it's an introduction to AI image generation. A real life photograph of a leafy plant sitting on a windowsill with a blurred city in the background. When generating images, you can also configure some parameters like the size and number of the images generated. You could also make use of the new upscaling feature to take your generated images and make them even more detailed. There you have it viewers, another secret feature that we didn't even know Google's working on in the background, actual upscaling inside of their Google Imagen and Party models. Look, they have a 2X and a 4X. So that is a really, uh, really quite good upscaling here, a 4096 by 4096 photo. This is good if you plan to use the images in print. Now, maybe you've generated an image that you like, but you wanna make a slight change to it. Well, in that case, you can make use of the new editing feature. If it's a small change, then you can highlight a specific region of the image you wish to edit, and then write a prompt that describes how you want to regenerate that region. This is just ridiculous too. 
Google is now revealing to us that they've been working on actual in-painting in the background. This is similar to the likes we've seen from Dolly 2 when it first announced in-painting, but even Stable Diffusion has it now, along with the insanely good generative fill from Adobe Photoshop Beta, which also has out-painting. But yes, Google's been working For on this too. Edits, you could describe how you want to regenerate the image without defining a mask. And voila. You can also use this feature with your own uploaded images. So that's how you make edits to a generated image. But what if you want to generate images of items that you have, but the model doesn't know about? For example, a new product or a company logo. Well, the fine tuning feature has got you covered. You can simply upload a couple of images of the item that you want to generate new images for, and then kick off a fine tuning job. Once the fine tuning job is done, you can then reference that item by name in your future prompts to generate brand new images that include your unique item. They also reveal to us that they have integrated Google Dream Booth, which was actually really great open source tech by Google that Stable Diffusion made great use of. Anyways, Dream Booth, which allows you to fine tune on faces, logos, pretty much any object you want, it's actually integrated inside of this generative AI studio. So you can fine tune a bunch of little dream booth models, assumingly trained on either party or Imogen and just use them uh, in all of your, uh, your needs here. So we like, this is like really awesome stuff. That's like stuff we haven't seen before. I wish we could train dream booth models on like mid journey, for example, that would be amazing. So they, they even built that into this generative AI studio. Why won't you just give it access to us? I'm sure a lot of people would pay for it. A fantastic way for rapidly generating new custom images for your own products for marketing materials. So those are some of the new features of image generation in generative AI studio. And all of them are also accessible via an API so that you can embed image generation technology directly into your applications. There it is. They plan to release it at some point in the future. API access, API access, API access. They are going to allow people to essentially allow image generation with either Imogen or Party or whatever model it is inside of websites and stuff. Fascinating. Midjourney doesn't even have an API yet, so that's, uh, I hope, coming very, very soon. And if they're allowing API access, wouldn't it just be public access? So Google Imogen slash party could be coming public soon. Be sure to check out the rest of Generative AI Studio and comment below how you're gonna use the new image generation features. So viewers, here is the big issue with this. This is like locked down. You can still go on to Vertex AI and like this Generative AI Studio, but there is no AI image generation. This is meant for specific developers, specific companies that have been granted access by Google via a waitlist form, which I do have. I'll link it down below, but I don't think any of us are going to get access to it because we're not a part of this little Google group that is approved for this stuff. You know, we're not developers, we're not companies, unless a few of you are developers or companies, then maybe you have a, a better shot. This is the form itself. This already like is not meant for, uh, for the public. You can just tell. Requests for additional access to our Google products are only for previously provisioned users slash customers. I mean, that is the first thing right away. If you've not been provisioned to Vertex, please contact your Google POC. Yeah, none of us have that, do we? Any requests that are not part of the trusted testers program will not be provisioned. This is very clearly not meant for the public, but you can try it down below. I, I don't think it's going to work, and I hope Google doesn't get mad at me for just like releasing this. Again, some very sneaky people on my Discord server discovered all this. So viewers, this is the documentation for Vertex AI. They actually have a ton of different stuff for all of this. Vertex AI image generation is a preview offering subject to the pre-GA offering terms of the Google Cloud service. Limited support, changes and features may not be compatible with other versions. Yeah, so like this thing is like super in preview mode. It's not publicly out. They even have a link here to an unlisted video with a little bit more about Imogen. So it actually is definitely Google Imogen. 
And this video is also pretty cool. You can interact with, tune, customize, and embed foundation models into your applications. No ML expertise required. You can access a full suite of foundation models across different modalities, including text, image, code, and speech. All of these models have enterprise-grade data governance and security, and you don't need to worry about setting up custom serving infrastructure. With Generative AI Studio, you can prompt models through a simple UI, tune models with your own data, and embed models into your applications via API endpoints. Let's take a look at just one example of how you can use Imagine on Generative AI Studio to generate and edit images. And apparently the, the Google model is actually pronounced Imagine. Let's say we wanna add a new product to our catalog and handbags are always popular. In Vertex AI, I can simply choose Imagine, our text to image foundation model, and I'll go ahead and enter my desired prompt, and ta-da, I now have multiple variations to work with. Cool, right? I think I'll pick this one, it's almost perfect. If I wanna tweak the design, I have more power than simple in-painting. I can use mask-free editing, so it will work regardless of the complexity of the image, giving me the freedom to easily iterate and explore different options without the complexity of hosting my own model or figuring out its hyperparameters. Let's change the material to iridescent blue with a scale texture and add a tassel. Apparently they have mask-free editing as well, which is pretty crazy, where you can literally just type a prompt and it will essentially by chat do edits on what you already created. Typically, we would now create a physical prototype of the bag to take it to market, but we only have a few minutes, so let's use an existing tote bag and show how we can generate creative options with Vertex AI. I took a few pictures of the bag using my phone and was able to fine tune a model with them. And in just a few minutes, I can now see my handbag literally anywhere, from the Grand Canyon to the beach to the city, all without getting on a plane. Guys, look at how good that dream booth is with Imogen. Imogen is a fantastic model, and Stable Diffusion is not nearly as powerful, clearly. Combining dream booth with this is, like, totally nuts. Look how good this handbag looks in all these random locations. It's insane. This shot is my favorite, and I think I'll use it. With Vertex AI, I can quickly and easily upscale it so it looks consistent on high-resolution displays in looks my like online store upscaling and too. in print. It's almost ready to be added to my site. As I'm expanding globally, the power of Vertex AI will let me generate text captions for accessibility and localize them into more than 300 languages. Maybe my next market will be Arabic speaking, so let's translate the copy. So moving back to the documentation, once you've been approved to use Vertex AI image generation, you can actually return to this page to access the feature documentation, which we don't have. But yeah, I'll link this down below if you guys want to go through all of it because they have a ton of really cool examples and yeah, interesting stuff going on. It looks like Imogen is actually making some strides into the real world of products. So viewers, what do you think? This gets me very excited because Google Imogen is something that I've wanted for a very long time. Again, when it was announced, it was like leaps and leaps and leaps ahead of anything we had seen before for AI image generation. It still is like up at that level of like, wow, this is really, really good. Plus the dream booth. I mean, that's something we haven't seen before. So this thing is real and it should be coming into our hands at some point in the future, judging on the information that we discovered today. Obviously no release date. It could be months, but we're hoping for soon, right? Thank you guys so much for watching. Check out some of my other videos and I will see you in the next one.